Are you considering making a move abroad or maybe you are in the planning phases of moving abroad, but feel a little bit concerned that you might be lonely, feel homesick or have trouble integrating? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five things I did to help uh, integrate into my new life here in France. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that each time I upload a video about living abroad, moving abroad, or finding the confidence and courage to live life on your terms, you will be notified. My name is Patricia Brooks, and in January of 2018, I left my job and I moved to the south of France where I have been living ever since. And it's been an amazing experience filled with ups and downs. And one of those downs was feeling isolated and alone here in France, especially during the first eight months of my life here. And so I wanted to share with you five things that I did that helped me to feel like I belong and get integrated into my new life here. So the first thing I did was I enrolled in a language school. My first landlady suggested that I do that. Uh, there was a language school at the end of the street and I did. After hesitating a little bit because I didn't want to go back to a classroom setting, um, after I did, I was so happy because number one, I needed to improve my French and learn the grammar, um, understand why I was saying the things I was saying the way I was saying them. But also there was this added benefit that there was a group of six or seven other students who were also foreigners who um, were learning French and, and that was our connection. And so I immediately did not feel alone. And there was one person who uh, I made friends with. And during that first year, we would go uh, out to get a beer or a drink after class. And so we became friends. And so that was really helpful. In addition to enrolling in a language school, you might want to join groups. I know that before I made my move and when I made my scouting trips, I um, met up with a couple of groups. One was Weight Watchers. I was a member of Weight Watchers in the United States, and that's an international organization. And they have meetings here or had meetings here before the pandemic. And I joined the, the group uh, when I was on vacation scoping out my life here. But then also once I landed... And the second one was this meditation center, uh, Heartfulness Meditation Center that had a branch in Richmond, Virginia, but also in Perpignan, France, which was the first city I moved to. And so I um, joined those groups in my first year and so made connections that way. Very, very helpful. The other thing uh, I did was I went online to the website On Va Sortir. We're going to go out. Uh, that's what that means. And it's OVS for short. It's kind of like meetup.com. And there are lots of events that you can do. And one of the things I signed up for was laughter yoga. And I did not know what that was. I, uh, but I went in my third week and I was in for such a treat and surprise. It was a surreal experience because here I am in my new life in France, not really believing it still. And then in this, this group of people, I don't know, and we're just laughing like fools for no reason at all. And it was so liberating. It was such a great experience. I went back again and again. And in fact, the facilitator, um, we are friends. I actually signed up and became a, a laughter yoga facilitator because of that. So that's number one. Enroll in schools, join groups, and be intentional about it. Um, before you land, scope out groups that you can reach out to beforehand. So have you moved to a different city or a different state? What were some of the things that you did to uh, make connections and make new friends? Comment below. So the second thing is to have documentation, and that is proof of address. Now, because I was living in something that's similar to an Airbnb that's completely furnished and utilities are included, I did not have an electric bill to show, oh yeah, this is my address. And so every place I turned, you know, whether it was to get um, a cell phone or to set up a bank account, they were asking me for this justificatif domicile. And that was the bane of my existence for the first year and a half because I didn't have that. Now, my first, my second landlady was very helpful in helping me get a bank account and uh, setting up a my cell phone service because um, she just 
you know, went in with me and she showed her identity and she vouched for me, but I did not feel very independent. It wasn't until my second year, 18 months in, when I was getting ready to buy a car and I needed car insurance that my insurance agent said, oh, you don't have this juste cative domicile? Uh, well, that's easy. All you need to do is get renter's insurance, and that certificate is your proof of address. And I was like, oh, that's all I needed. And so 110 euros later, um, I've got this thing that I needed since the beginning of my stay. And so my uh, suggestion to you is find out what is required to show proof of address and how you can get that. Can you get that with renter's insurance if you um, are kind of like me and didn't have that electric bill? Definitely made me feel like oh, I belong, I count. The other thing is, um, that's the documentation side. The, the other side is these loyalty cards. Now, these loyalty cards that we have in the US um, that give you discounts are an easy way to start feeling like you belong. Because when you go into a store and if you go regularly and they ask you for your card, you just whip it out and you're, you feel like you're a member. You feel like, oh, I'm not just passing through here. I live here, right? And it seems kind of small, but getting these is makes you feel like you belong. So that is a tip that I think will help you feel better. Now, just yesterday, now this is almost four years in, I got my library card here in Surrey. And it made me feel good because I gave all of the documentation I needed, my juste quitte domicile, my ID, um, and I was able to fill out the paperwork. I wrote my check for, uh, for my annual fee and the security deposit. And I was given my library card. I went up and I looked around and I got a book and a magazine that I took out and it felt felt really good, felt really good. So those things are so important to feeling like you belong. Documentation, proof of address, and these loyalty cards is another thing. So number three is to set a meaningful goal. Now, my first year in France uh, was up and down because I had a lot of self-doubt and I was afraid um, that maybe I'd made a mistake and I didn't know anybody. And even though I was doing certain things, I still felt alone. But part of that was because I had spent so much time and energy planning to get to France. That was a huge goal that once I got here and I'd reached that goal, it wasn't a letdown, but there was an emptiness okay. in now what? my time because now what was I focused on? I wasn't focused on anything. I was focused on, oh my gosh, I'm here alone and I don't have a lot to do. I didn't come with a job and I had told myself I was going to look for a job, but I really decided that that was not for me. I was going to take the years as a sabbatical to figure out what I really wanted to do with my life. And so that's what I did, but that left a lot of time to think. Had I come with, okay, my goal is to move to France. And once I get to France, my next goal is I feel like that would have minimized some of that, that fear and that loneliness. But what I did do about three months in was I decided to start my podcast, the Discovering Courage podcast. And that took a lot of time to learn how to, to do all of that. And so my recommendation is be intentional about that. Make that a part of your move abroad plan is to, okay, once I land, what is it that I'm going to focus on? What is it that I, what project do I want to take on that has meaning and purpose to me so I don't feel uh, completely adrift? So that's tip number three. Tip number four is learn the language. Get a good command of the language because that will make you um, interact with people in, in the way that you interact with people where you are from now. One example I had, and this happened in the same day, was I went to a hardware store and one of the things I needed was a pot for this plant that was root bound. It was desperately in need of a bigger home. And so they had pots, they had these plastic pots, but none of them had drainage holes. And I knew that I needed drainage holes. And so I looked around and looked around and finally I saw somebody in the section who worked there and I asked, you know, you don't have any pots that have drainage holes? And he's like, no, we don't. And then I said, well, my plant needs to drain. You know, what do people do? And he said, oh, well, they take the pot home and they drill holes in them themselves. I'm like, well, 
I don't have any tools to do that. Um, so what do people like me do? And he's like, oh, well, we have a, um, a section in the front of the store where somebody can put holes in the pot for you. And that's what I did. And I walked out of the store with this, this big pot for my, my plant, which is doing well now, um, that had, that had holes in it, drainage holes in it. But had I not felt comfortable with the language, I probably would not have had that conversation. And who knows, uh, how my plant would be doing right now. So that was one thing that happened in that day. Second thing that happened was I went to Valet Bureau, which is an office supply store near me. And I picked up some things. And one of the things I needed was a padded envelope and just to send a couple of my books to a friend in. And so I'd brought the books with me to see the size, the size of the envelope. Um, and they had them, but they had them in packages of 10 on the shelf. And I was like, I don't need 10. I just need one. So I put that back, went to the checkout counter, gave her all the things that I was buying. She rang everything up. And then I asked, about the padded envelopes. I said, I see you have these packs of padded envelopes. I only need one. And she didn't say a word. She reached below the counter. She pulled out this padded envelope. She handed it to me. I took the books out of my bag, put it in the envelope, perfect fit. And she rang that up for me too. And so my problem was solved. But once again, had I not had a level of comfort with the language, I might not have asked that. And so being able to do that and interact in the way that I would normally act in the U.S. made me feel like I belong. So that's four. And then number five is expectations and self-identity. You know, what we expect shapes our experience. Wayne Dyer tells the story of a woman who moved to California from another state. And she runs into a local and she asks the local, what are the people like here? And the local says, well, what are the people like where you're from? And she says, oh, the people are mean, they're ugly, Mm -mm. Uh, they don't like them. And the local said, well, that's exactly how you'll find the people here. Later that day, a man who has just moved from another state to California asks the man the same thing. And the man responds in the same way. Well, what are the people like where you're from. And the man says, oh, they're so friendly and warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm really going to miss those people. And the local man says, oh, well, that's exactly how you're going to find the people here. And so our expectations um, set us up for our experiences because we'll, we'll see exactly what we expect to see. And I think moving to a different culture, we can, where we may have stereotypes of what people are like, can set us up for either good or bad experiences. I know that I've heard that the French aren't really that friendly. And I haven't found that to be the case. But I think also knowing how they, what the cultural codes are can help in that instance, because I think that sometimes people don't think French people are friendly because they don't engage in the way that French people are used to, like saying bonjour before asking a question or before starting a conversation. That, that is something that will make people be a little friendlier. So expectations is one thing that will set you up for better or worse integration into your new country. And the second thing is self-identity, how you see yourself. There were two ways that I identified as when I first moved here that I think probably caused me to have a slower integration. One was I saw myself as an introvert, somebody who is shy, who is reserved, who doesn't, you know, start conversations, who doesn't go out and sit at a cafe alone. And the second was as an African-American woman with the viewpoint of an American. Um, And I think that that viewpoint is as an outsider, really. You know, in kindergarten, I had an experience that caused me to recognize how different I was. And I carried that around, I guess, my whole life in the United States. And I brought a little bit of that to France thinking, oh, I'm a black American. There's a certain certain idea about a black woman in America. And that's not how the French see me because they're not American. But my self-identity caused me to act in certain ways that may have slowed my progress integrating. So expectation, what we expect and how we see ourselves are also major factors in how easily you integrate. And so 
being aware of your expectations and being aware of how you self-identify and how who you need to become in order to have a different experience is really key. Now, if you are considering moving abroad, but fear the isolation, the loneliness, the homesickness, why not get on a discovery call with me and see if my program, the Carefree Expat Incubator Program, might be something that would be helpful to you. And I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can schedule your time with me. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And share with me what tip was the most helpful for you. That is all I have for you today. I will see you again next time. Bye for now.